Good evening and welcome back to another edition of Beyond the Backstage Pass. I'm your host, Vince Edwards from Sound Image Productions. Uh, you also may know me from Death by Loadout and the Backstage Pass, two closed Facebook roadie groups uh, that I minister. Here tonight with me is, uh, it's, well, guys, it's the birthday boy. He's 30 years old today. Very significant birthday. Kyle Thomas. How you doing, brother? Not too bad. How about yourself, Vince? Oh, man, I'm, I'm good. I guess as good as you can be. Happy birthday to you, first of all. Thank you, brother. Uh, if you want to send your love, you can send it on the comments on the YouTube channel. Um, thanks for coming in on this special day. Um, yeah, yeah, I said, how am I doing? Uh, you know, the, the, the work thing's bugging me a little bit. I think we talked about this slightly. Yeah, last time, for but, sure. Yeah, but other than that, I guess it's all good. You know, I think there's probably 6 billion, 700 million people that wish they had my problems. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, what's new with you? Not too much. Uh, just been taking it pretty easy, reading up on some, some base curriculum, uh, retouching on the Bobcats mastering book a little bit. Uh, it's a little deep, so I yeah. got to read it a few times yeah. every, every time I dip into it. Great book, great source. Um, but yeah, I know I've heard that before that it's a, it's like a three read. You have to, oh, minimum. Yeah, yeah you got to read it like three <laughs> times to get the, the philosophy and what he's saying there. But if you can get it, man, yeah, you, you got the tools to put on any show and sound amazing every time. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that, but at least they, there's some good concepts we can speak about, and uh, you have a pretty talented source to actually get some some solid information from, you know? Yeah, there is a few books out there that uh, can help um, people, quick reference, and or just to talk philosophy, talk shop, talk technique. But I know that uh, one that I've always ran to is uh, the Backstage Handbook. I feel like it should be in every roadie's uh, pelly. It talks about freaking every electrical connection you think, knots, um, rigging point. It's it's uh, it is really it's covers, the book. Huh? Yeah, it yeah. really covers the base, and uh, again, it's like a it's like the Swiss Army knife of being a roadie. Mm. You know, it's just the go-to guy. Got anything special planned for your birthday? Nothing yet. I'm looking at this weekend going up uh, fishing. I was going to go yesterday, but no, yeah, COVID, you can't get a boat right now, so that no seemed, tinny for me. You know, that, that one's odd to me. When you said that to me yesterday, I thought that was strange because you just renting a guy a boat. I yeah, mean, you you're can't isolated. be more alone. I mean, that's the social distance of it all time. You would think. But, but uh, I guess we, yeah. You know, swing and a miss sometimes. So, so you think you'll have something available this weekend? If not, I'll, I'll get up on foot, you know, and go hiking somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you still doing that S6L training? I am, yeah. I'm trucking right along with it. Still getting some uh, some files built, always trying to make improvements. So it's making more and more sense every time I get on there. So Yeah, and uh, I know we're really lucky to get uh, Robert Scoville to help us with that. And so that's been kind of sweet. I know we've had uh, we had Shauna Hall in here from Parliament, P-Funk, their engineer, uh, in here today almost all day. This woman puts in the work. She's going to be a guest on the show in a couple, I guess, what, four or five Thursdays from now. We're booked until September 10th. Yeah, backed We're, up pretty got far. Got some huh? crazy good guests coming on. Scotty Ross from Journey, uh, Robert Scoville, Def Leppard, Tom Petty, uh, Greg Price, Ozzy, Black Sabbath, Rage Against the Machine, shit, who has a knee done? Yeah, it's um, a list, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's a great list. It's lots of good uh, stuff coming up in the future. Uh, right now, as you know, we get lucky. We do. We know some people. And um, so we get lucky when it comes to the guests. I always uh, never take that for granted. Uh, tonight we got a true badass in the house, a good friend. Uh, he's known as uh, the co-owner for um, Diablo Digital with Greg Price. They do uh, custom pro, uh, pro Tool recording rigs. And... Um, his resume reads like a who's who of rock and roll. It's super fun. Um, Van Halen, uh, Katy Perry, uh, Rage Against the Machine, Linkin Park, Marilyn Manson, Rush, probably most of his career, Rush, and Van Halen. To, just to mention a few, we got Brad Maddox in the house. How are you doing, buddy? Hey, fellas. Kyle, happy birthday. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Sweet. It's great to see you, man. How are you Good doing? Good to be here. How have I been doing? Yeah, uh, you know, it's been a little wacky lately. Trying to stay busy, <laughs> trying to stay in touch with people, and um, working in the garden, yeah. getting a few things done around the house. Yeah. Finally, that's been put, been put off for a while. Uh, just trying to, you know, stay mentally healthy, which can be tricky when you're 
not working. <laughs> well, I think it's a challenge. That's probably the, one of the biggest, that and the financial aspect is yeah. the biggest challenge to this whole thing. If you're not sick, you're kind of tripping on those two things. Yeah, yeah. Any secrets? Because you seem save, to keep it together. Save some CEO. money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Save your money. <laughs> That's uh, a really good we point. We had, uh, <laughs> for me personally, it was actually not bad timing work-wise for financially speaking. Just uh, had worked really a lot for about three years in a row and, and had some some money socked away. I mean, I know not, not everybody, but so for me, no, it we're is, gonna be fine. It is kind of a, a rare thing to have you around the shop because I'm used to you being gone all the time. Yeah, I'm you know? usually uh, gone all the time. Yeah, yeah, and you were on a hell of a tear there for a minute at Flow and Machines World Tour. Yeah. I know you did some Katy Perry, some Sarah yeah. Bareilles. Yep. Um, yeah, super fun. And, and like, um, especially the, the Florence thing went for well over a year and straight and like literally straight to Sarah Borales from there and yeah um Flo liked to so, come out yeah. to the to the office right I would see you would send the pictures out yes. from that tour and Flo <laughs> would come out to your she front of house does a thing so where she often. goes out into the audience yeah. and and um she would make her way out the front of house and stand up on the barricade right in front of me and sing a yeah sing a song and that was always interesting. that's fun super fun super super fun um how'd you get in the business everybody it's just a kind of a common question. You like the origin that. story. Yeah, yeah the, the origin yeah. story. Come on, you know, let's <laughs> X-Men this. Um, when I was in high school, and before that actually even, but I was playing in bands. I was a keyboard player. Uh, back then, that was like a Fender Rhodes and a Mini Moog. That, oh, great. That was a keyboard player. Yeah, that's super <laughs> fun. Rig. Um, and I, uh, I, I sort of gravitated towards the technical end of things, and then... Um, uh, synthesizers sort of came and exploded in the early 80s and uh, really tinkered with like sound design on, on synths and uh, I majored in music production and engineering when I went to college and um, thinking I was going to be a player but be like, you know, engineer and uh, maybe produce or something and um, I, did a, I did a stint in the studio, not very long and uh, I got asked to go out on a tour, long story short, and uh, I really enjoyed the live thing more than the studio thing. It was, it, I thought it, it was more challenging and um, exciting in a lot of ways. So uh, I bounced back and forth a little bit, but then just sort of really was drawn to, the, to going into an empty space and setting up a production and, um, you know, for taking it from nothing to gigantic show back down to nothing. and. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, I got to... It's addictive. Yeah, no, I, and I love it to this day. Love it, love yeah. it. And, um, you know, the... Uh, uh, what, what, I was fortunate enough, I was working for an opening act on a really, really big tour, and uh, um, there was some, like, really heavy hitter audio and production teams on that, and I really enjoyed watching them work, and the, uh, I get a lot of my... A lot of my work ethic comes from those early days when it was really tough. I mean... Did you have a mentor? Um, I think we've talked about it before. Ted Leamy was a guy that yeah. I, the first couple, three tours I did, I did with him as the crew chief. And um, he's like, he was like the, the lovable hard ass, you know, like, yeah. like great guy, super great guy. But uh, he really expected a lot from people. And, and um, yeah, so I mean, that was... That was uh, really a big influence on me. And also I, I, I toured with uh, Robert uh, as a, I was on the sound crew and Robert was mixing Def Leppard back in, blah, 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 I don't know, 87. Hysteria tour. Yeah, Hysteria tour, that's yeah. right. And yeah. uh, I got a lot from watching him work too. <clears throat> you and Robert Scoville. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's kind of an amazing guy. He's coming on the show too. We're lucky. I know, great. Like, very lucky. It's great. So again, you're home right now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you're not supposed to be. I had planned for you to be, I knew it was in the schedule. You were out for. I was, I'm supposed to be standing in a stadium right, right now. now. Yeah. 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 What happened? Who were you going out with? Tell us about um, that. And I know you're going out with, it was with Bob Wilcox. He was going to be your mon the monitor guy. Right. And Tony, and Tony Luna. And Tony Luna. That's right. So with Motley Crue yeah. and, and Def Leppard. The big and Poison, show. Yeah. And Joan Jett. That would have been massive. And uh, it, um, my understanding, it sold really, really well. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it, uh, yeah, it just, there was a time there we were sort of ho holding out hope back in March. 
yeah. April that, it, you know, things might simmer down and you might still get to do it, but... Um, yeah, I remember talking about this right up to the, yeah. to the last, and then they just... Had, yeah, they it no got, it's so basically, like a, lo like a lot of stuff, just got all, we're going to do it again in 2021, yeah. you know? So it's been rescheduled. Yeah, same time next year, basically. Oh, God. <laughs> Slightly different... So we're going to lose a whole year, uh, a whole season to us of I income. That is never uh, seen anything crazy. remotely like yeah, this. Yeah. Like, I mean, just an entire industry just shut down. Just like we had little small like 9-11 or Iraq, Iraq War One or Iraq War Two. We were kind of tapered in the middle yeah. of the day, a little bump. This is a full on. Well, like, some of those things blow. actually after a time were sort of inspired people to go out and that's true. Um, US this is like, you know, I, I don't know uh, the f when people are going to be, a, a, allowed to do a show, B, or the, when are the fans going to be comfortable going to a show. Um, we have a lot of challenges. I think even, I mean, there's a lot of things about touring that I think post-COVID are going to have to change. Um, riding around on a bus with 10 or 11 people is well, a recipe 10 for 10 or 11 buses. It, it's a, a recipe for disaster as far as disease goes. And, um, you know, if you get up sick one morning and you have a load in, you go. Until uh, now, we'll see where it goes. But, I mean, Historically, our, our production is going to be comfortable if I call in at 9 a.m. for a before a 10 a.m. call and go out, do, I feel horrible. You know what? I, no. I, you know, I they're going to go go. Right now, no. Stay but, home. Stay, huh. stay in the hotel. You're crew tonight, but you got to cough. So you're going yeah. to call it no. Well, right. I mean, I it's, don't think that's, that's going to work. But, but those are issues that have to be addressed, I think, you know, for, you. candidly. Um, I, think I suppose it all changes if there's a vaccine. and uh, Who knows, right? I mean, that's so, the crystal ball is so cloudy right now. It's just impossible to predict. But I know everybody's just shoved everything into next year, which is going to be crazy because all the stuff that was going to go out next year is going out next year also. And, um, and I had an interesting conversation that all the people that were going to take a year off are, have been stuck in their, their apartments or whatever writing music and now are going to do something. And they're also going to want to go out soon. So it's going to be, potentially, we'll see. It could be really quite a, quite a year next year. Yeah, we'll see. Hard to know, but hard to know. But, but I would think logic would dictate that. Uh, as long as we can, f as long as we can find a path to doing these things, you know, safely, in a safe somehow. way. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, of all the bands you've worked with, uh, I've worked with a few of them as well. Um, Van Halen always. You know, me and George were out with Van Halen, actual Van Halen, post to Van Hagar, mm -hmm. and uh, we had our experiences with him. And I know how we how that went for us. Mm -hmm. I was curious, what was it like for you working with Van Halen? You were out. You were in front house. Yeah. 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 Was this fair warning? What, what, this? No, uh, a, a different kind of truth was the tour. Okay. So later. Yeah. After second, second Dave, Dave got back into yeah, yeah. the band. Right. Mm -hmm. um, well, for, first of all, they're, they were a, they're a great band. So it's one of those bands that yeah, they can play. on many levels was really pleasant to mix. And uh, they, um, they were always nice to me. Uh, Good call. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, there's challenges. I mean, there's, there was definitely some personalities in the band that um, I got along great with Eddie. Uh, great. Uh, I got along great with Alex. And Wolfie and uh, Dave could be interesting, like, like I'm and Dave. Yeah, you know, it could be a super nice guy. That's right. It was a bit up and down, I guess. But um, I think, like, after kind of a rocky start, I mean, the whole thing started weird for me because I came in to take over for somebody who was being let go for, in my opinion, no good reason. Um, and he's a friend of mine, so it was awkward, and you know. I mean, he's still a friend of mine, so it's like I didn't, I, I didn't want to take his job, but he, you know, whatever. I, I, this just this happens. How it works, this Unfortunately, how it works, it works so out. often. And he and he, he yeah. did okay after that, so fine. Yeah. Um, so there was a really interesting kind of few shows of me to the mixing the band to the point where I felt comfortable that I, I that, or that was they had settled on me being okay to be out there and. and and doing, yeah, you passed and the doing probation the, period. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. 
<laughs> that East can be extraordinarily critical, and I'm glad to hear that you had a good experience no, was, with him. You was, know, I found it was where you catch him in his career. There was some times when super sweet. he could be a little sweet, difficult. Yeah. So no, He was super yeah. sweet. We, we got along, along great. Yeah, that's great. Did you ever go back to his place, 5150? I did not. Yeah, interesting I, place. I, I literally got yeah. thrown into production rehearsals. It was uh, not like that. You know? yeah. It was like we were going on... We were going on tour next week, basically. You know? after, after the show. Sorry, guys. I, ask me about the place. <laughs> okay, 5150 Studios. I know what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just never ask me later, because, wow. Awesome. You don't uh, check, you know, it's not on an island. In the <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's L.A., down in L.A. <laughs> um, you know, I know you were out. I remember you came back to the shop. With, uh, you were out with Lincoln Park. You were mixing Lincoln Park, their last tour. And you rolled in. Yeah. And I was like, what, what the hell are you doing here? And you sadly informed me that Linkin Park singer had taken his life and you were, the tour was over. Yep. Yeah, you weren't supposed to be here. You were supposed to be at work. And it was mm -hmm. bizarre. How did that affect you? What did you take? Well, it was, a, it was a gut punch. Yeah. I was literally. Crazy. Out of nowhere. I was literally packing to get on the plane the next day. Uh, and a friend of mine texted me that he'd seen that uh, Chester had taken his life on, on TMZ, which, you know, great. Fucking so, TMZ. Yeah, well, whatever, then they were right, unfortunately. And, yeah. uh, so there was really a couple of days of, uh, it just totally upended my, you know, my job, obviously my job was gone, really. Um, That's actually, I don't ever see you, I see you only operate in one emotion. It's usually anger. <laughs> <laughs> only one I know you to have outright. No, I'm, 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 was, I'm okay on your show, though. That, I'm that nice. day, yeah, I know. You're <laughs> sweetheart right now. It's all good. Um, but that day, yeah, I could see you were... No, it, it was really... It, it, and, and it fucked with you a little bit. It's... Um, that was tough. Yeah, and there's a lot of interesting emotions. And, and uh, some... Sometime later, not too much. There was a memorial in L.A. I want to say it was a couple weeks later or something. That was a big deal. And uh, the band was really, A, the band paid us all for the leg, which was great of them. Fair and fair. God. Yeah. Um, the, uh, they flew most of the people that had worked for them to L.A. I had an interesting experience, actually, just on the subject of mental health. Sure. Um, we were all staying in a... Um, we're all staying in a hotel together, and they had uh, they had uh, arranged for a grief counselor to be in one of the um, conference rooms downstairs in the hotel if if you wanted to go. And um, I mean, I sort of had a number of emotions. I, I sort of went from being angry and sad and sort of down on myself and. Um, but I was sort of like, okay. Like, I felt like, oh, okay. I, I don't need, I don't need, thank you, but I don't need this. And I walked by, I walked by the conference room. I think I'd gone out for a bite to eat. So it was like lunchtime. Walked by the conference room and there was, I don't know, 16 or 18 people sitting in there with this wow. counselor uh, from the tour. And there was just sort of like a, a group of people talking. So I stepped in and, um, everybody was just really kind of being open about how they felt. And it was interesting to see, the range of reactions, because some people get a, mad. A little all over. The, it was a little all over yeah, the yeah. place. Super uh, sad, super mad. And um, so I had my turn, and I'm, I was sharing, and, and everybody, we all talked for uh, I don't know, we were there for 45 minutes or so, something like that. And, and in hindsight, I'm really glad I did it. Like, I, I wish I had been more open to just going in there to start with. Um, sure. It was helpful to just talk to somebody that could say, you know, this is all normal and, you know, you're, what, what you're going through is, you know, uh, real and everybody's going to react to this differently. And it was, it was good. It was good. Yeah, that's... Uh, I would encourage people not... Hopefully you would never have to go through anything like that. But that, that kind of uh, mental health check can be a very, very good thing, I think. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Therapy has its place. I think we're conditioned in some ways in our society to... Um, as males particularly, I know in the African American community as well, they, the, the stigma of having anything uh, mental health wise can be enough to keep you away from getting help. Yeah, maybe. And I also think specifically touring, mm -hmm. it, it's, I think there's, I don't know if there's a stigma about it exactly, but it, you know, you're, 
You're supposed to be. You're sort of encouraged kind of hard. to suck it up. Yeah, you know? <laughs> you're supposed to have a certain amount of. We call this the man factor in here. It's like you know, that's what we do is we take these youngsters and to make them tough enough to go out on the road. Yeah, it's, but I think uh, that not for the. You know, I think that there is a. I mean, I've seen people not do well on the road, like really not do well, and and it, in hindsight, yeah, I mean. I mean a lot of self medication 20 years ago, yeah, yeah. A lot of that. A lot of 20 years ago, you would just sort of like, you know. Power through it. Get up. Do know? it. And I think now, I think people might be a little more open to, hey, maybe you got to talk to somebody, you know. Like, it's a good thing. We'll probably tell you to get way. off the road anyway, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but I, I don't know. Right? Usually the talk uh, yeah. in my old school vibe is you deal with that either before or after. While you're there, you checked in, you were along for the ride. Yeah, maybe. Know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how it fits because it's, uh, again, it's uh, logistically such a different, uh, such a different world than anything else, really. Um, but I could see a place for, you know, or at least being more tolerant or open to, uh, what do I say? Like, I wouldn't, at this point in my career, I would not get down on anybody because, they were in a bad place mentally and they needed to talk to somebody. I certainly would encourage them to do it. Well, absolutely. I don't think it's that. When I say, you know, toughen up, get it done before or after, I'm saying when you've got a position like yourself or you're the monitor guy, um, particularly these critical positions, I think it's incumbent upon you, opposed to a utility or, you know, a patch guy, if you've got a couple of those, you know, you can kind of interchange. Mm. Um, it, when you're in that that high level with these huge bands and these huge stadiums and the, the kind of money, the amount of money that's behind these things, each individual event is riding largely on your positions, you know, doing well and being well. Yeah, a handful of other people. Yeah, yeah. sure, of course. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. But there's a certain interchangeability as you go down the run because yeah. there's more. You know, you're kind of a singular thing. And, I know uh, what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, I just, but I do think that with all the sort of the movement towards health and safety in the business, which is largely a good thing, um, I could see a world where there's a little more kind of mental health check yeah. that goes on every once in a while. I could see somebody that's really doing badly. I think the tendency decades ago was to you know, whip them or fire them. <laughs> there was a lot of yelling. <laughs> there was a lot of yelling, yeah, in the old days. Things, sure. have, things have changed for the better. You have to dodge a flying monitor at your head once yeah. in a while. Like, seriously, yeah, that's yeah. real shit. Yeah. Um, that's the old, you know, run and gun, uh, hard ass way of getting it done. Mm -hmm. And although I know a lot of us older guys came up that way, it's, it doesn't really work nowadays. The, the young people are just different. They're built different. They're sensitive. They, you can't. Well, I don't even know. I mean, I think that. And you can get more the other way. I, I don't know if they are or not, but I do think the industry has become more professional in a lot of ways. Yeah. And, um, but also that, and we did a lot of things wrong 20 or 30 years ago that were just wrong. And Particularly 30 or 40. Yeah, the further back you go, yeah, the longer yeah, they get. 80s were a little rough. <laughs> 90s um, started getting a little better. And, uh, you know, I think we need to be open to new ways to do things and do things that are, you know, more accepting of people. And I mean, people come at these tours from all different angles, all different walks of life, sure. all different, they all have their different uh, Bunch of cultural viewpoints. And, sure. And, um, you know, you get kind of the gamut. and you get shoved into a, you know, a bus, and um, you know, just you you need to, to be a little more accepting and um, tolerant. I always felt in our business, just I think the nature of creative types. Most of us are failed musicians uh, in some way or another. We get that kind of that bone, that artist bone. Um, we've, we, oh, you know, I came through the punk scene. You've been around forever. You would, uh, we're pretty accepting bunch. You know, uh, for different types, different personality types, yeah, different. Uh, but I could say that there was, there's been times where I was more of a hard ass on people, like hard, more hard on people, um, not so willing to just listen and and uh, I don't know, like I'm no psychiatrist, but by any means, but. Well, well you're actually known for being a kind of a hard ass. So if you're saying <laughs> the nicer part of you <laughs> is like some, we're having some, you heard it here, people. Yeah. Uh, Bradley Maddox is coming out softer and gentler. Is that what I'm hearing? Like, seriously? <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, yeah, I guess. I'm just saying that I think that you're seeing a time now where we're entering, we've been entering into this time for the last several years where we're dealing with the realities of the, of 
how hard it is to work on the road and now how nobody can work on the road. And I think um, you said, you know, a lot of, a lot of us self-medicated. Uh, That's right. A lot of us drank too much and a lot of us did a lot of stupid things. And I, I don't think it has to be that way. I don't think it can be. No, you know. no, no, no. It's so much more professional. And the whole thing is the groupies are gone, basically. The drug dealers we had in backstage are gone. I mean, it's really a different animal. Totally. And there's, there's better things than that. And there's other things that I feel sad for the roadies coming up because they, don't, they didn't get the 80s and the 90s where there was some rock and roll shit going on backstage. And, yeah, and, but I mean, in hindsight, kind of it was fun. like... Let's, it, you know, it was tough, but it was fun. I had fun. I don't, I'm speaking. Oh, I, I will say I, I had, certainly had some, some fun shit. times, but I also, like, I was essentially hazed on the first couple tours I did for all intents and purposes. That's kind of normal. And, I, you know, it doesn't have to be. I don't no, think, I, I don't, see, I don't think now, I don't think you would get away with that. I don't I, hear anything about that. I don't see anything like that. So I think maybe that, but this was, again, the old school guys were just cut from a different cloth. It's, and there was a certain thing, and they were trying to weed us out. It was pirates. Yeah, total pirates. They were literally <laughs> trying to see if you could. For, and for people, better or worse. And I mean, you were going to let them down when the shit was jumping off. You know what I mean? That's they, they were trying to sort that out. I always felt that was the motivation. Was the reason they were being super hard on us and butt up jokes and having you do the feeder and you know the lame jobs and working your way through it was they were trying to. Well, yeah. I, I don't have a problem with like work having someone work their way up through, you know, starting. I say at the bottom exactly, but you know, with, with more rudimentary tasks and working sure. there and learning skills as they go. Absolutely, that's one thing. But I mean, I mean, I saw I saw some pretty awful things done to people. <laughs> <laughs> so we there's, should there's, go into really. There's a lot of time to come up with pranks, uh, you know, between doors and uh, uh, sound check, and so yeah, yeah, of course. But okay, well, I'm glad you turned over a new leaf of kindness <laughs> because. <laughs> He's going to surprise a few people, and that's very good. That's very good. By the way, uh, uh, you know, I mentioned the Diablo Digital thing. Yeah. You guys are a special thing. Uh, it's hard for me to articulate it. If you make uh, custom Pro Tool rigs that go out with U2 and the Stones and these really, uh, you know, important gigs to capture that. What Can you explain? Can, you got the elevator speech, what you and Greg Price do, your partner uh, at Diablo Digital. Well, we're, we, first of all, uh, the company was born out of a frustration of us trying to archive these shows, multi-track and archive these shows, and starting uh, 10 or 15 years ago, and, and really, really struggling with the equipment that was available, the reliability of the equipment that was available. It was a problem. We're talking back to ADATs and yeah, it was a and um, we felt like it was important to, re to record shows for posterity for a number of reasons, uh, and I won't go down the whole, I'm not trying to sell the company exactly, but I do think like there's a, what I notice over and over again is every tour has these magic moments. And um, we really think that it's important to be rolling, recording all the time because you never know when this guest, I have a, uh, I don't have it, but we multi-track, we were multi-tracking uh, Jack White shows in South America and Robert Plant came on and sang the Lemon Song for like the first time in 30 years that, that's pretty, with Jack White. Pretty and, important uh, moment to, right. be, and I mean, to have captured. What am I supposed to say? I'm not recording. I mean, you know, you got to have that. Yeah. You got to have that. And if you, if you don't embrace the, the archival, at least the archival aspects of it, not to mention the post and, uh, um, you know, the post-production aspect of it, it, you would never have that. It will just be a moment that was, that was lost in time. And imagine all the moments that were lost on time and all the, Beatles and Stones and uh, it's you, endless. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's a really special lane, which you guys. I mean, like I mentioned before, some of the biggest international acts in the world come to you to make sure that their mm -hmm. their performances are archived properly. Um, well, we've been we've been through the frustration that other engineers must have gone through at some point or another, or we just don't want. We want that experience to be a really good experience for engineers because we want this to build this huge library of of important moments and um, great performances. And uh, you know, it's never the best. The, D, the the mobile recording shows up to shoot your DVD, and it's that's never the best show of the tour ever. Ever, yeah. You know that, and and the band clinches up because it's the one night it's all getting recorded. And mm -hmm. you know, if they are, they know every night you're rolling. They're you know. They just do their show. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, it's uh, it's priceless, and you guys seem to be the, the, the guys to go to in town. 
um, for that technology. Um, I, you worked with uh, a band called Lovers and Strangers. Good band. Yeah, yeah. Bunch of friends. Uh, been Go back a ways. Oh, yeah. It's like 30 years. I don't even know. Uh, 30, 32 years, something like that. But uh, you've made, is it two, three albums with them? You, this will be the second Lovers and Strangers. Second Lovers and right? Strangers. What did you do, Ray and the Forget Me Not? Yeah, yeah. This is Ray Berlino. He's yeah, coming yeah. on the show, actually, uh, at the end awesome. of the month. Yeah, it's going to be great to have him down here. He's out of Vegas. Uh, good friend, a talented guy. Um, what was it that drove you to that project? I've heard the out, the the outcomes, the the recordings, yeah. and they're fantastic. It's not quite done yet. We're like, I think we're mastering. My brother's it. always playing yeah, yeah. the the cuts. Yeah, I think it's uh, his songwriting is really strong now. Yeah, yeah. really, He's it's good. really gotten. Um, uh, what's the word? Like, uh, it's, it's very, it, it's succinct. It's like the the song forms are great. The words are amazing. Like, I, I really like. And this album's fun too. Also, it's a little. A little more lighthearted in a lot of ways, you know? Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, and I really enjoy working with him. He's, he kind of lets me do my thing. Guy. Yeah. Which is nice. Um, yeah. And we have a really good rapport. Like, we, when we talk, he... Well, he trusts you completely. So, if you said it should go up, it's going up. If he said left, it's going left. I mean... It, <laughs> well, I mean, it's a dialogue. I mean, I'm not, sure. I'm not forcing anything on him. But of course. He, he, but he's he great trusts at, you. He's great about taking suggestions. And so I try to be too, but it's, you know what I mean? Like it's, he's not, he's not, nothing is in cement as we go through the process, you know? That makes it, uh, it makes it very enjoyable for me because I can, I can do what I like to do, you know? Well, I've seen, I've heard different versions of the same song mm -hmm. after you've got your hands on them and um, yeah, you're, you're making magic there on top Thank of their you. magic. So it's kind of a double. Thank you. Yeah. I'm yeah. really enjoying it. Really, really enjoying it. And it'll really be nice. Great. It's, it's almost done. I mean, we're like, we're mastering. Here pretty soon. So. Yeah, I think uh, when he comes on, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, great. Yeah, see what what the great what when they're releasing that sucker because I'd love to hear the whole thing live. Uh, you guys doing? I know um, you keep busy over at the shop still, even though we're down. But you've been doing some stuff with. I believe you've been. I hope I'm not talking out of turn. Creating some uh, content in the training area. Yeah, we're we're really just sort of on the threshold of that. Um, we, we've Greg and I because we're not we're not doing anything else. But I think also long term, we've sort of had this idea that we'd like to. Uh, you had been talking about it. Yeah, I'd like to yeah. to do. I hate to call it training. It's it, it's more like. What uh, would you call it then? Well, we want to teach, right? As opposed to train, right? Okay. Well, it's a subtle difference, but it is different. I mean, it's where we want to. We want to pass along. This is something that you're. So is the is this difference there? Let me root around in that. Is the difference that you're going to put it up on the web and it'll be accessible to anybody? Or yeah, it's on the table. Um, yeah, I, I gonna, think that we're, you know, we're not card. fully arrived at what we're going to do exactly with it, but we're going to start doing some videos. Uh, I think we're going to start having some people come in, in person, mm -hmm. uh, do some some ha uh, hands-on uh, training and um, training. I, again, it's to me, it's more like we want to teach people. In parting. And more about like mixing, not, I mean, it's technical obviously, but we, we're not trying to teach, we're not trying to train someone how to use this console. We're, it's broader than that. We want to teach how, you know, some fundamentals of mixing, some, some tricks about mixing, some sort of philosophies you guys were talking about earlier. Um, uh, just our, our, how Greg and I approach things, which is, you know, we're a little different from each yeah, other. So, sure. uh, I, again, I think it's just kind of like we're at this point. I, I've done this for 35 years. Greg's done it for 40 something years, and 43. We have a lot of a lot of experience under our belt, and um, mm -hmm. we've That's stolen a lot of other. Between you, we've stolen a lot of other people's tricks. So <laughs> of course, we'd like to kind of pass that along. No, you guys have always been extraordinarily generous with your uh, yeah. your information, your your even your gear. I mean, my God, the, I mentioned earlier, Shauna Hall from Parliament was in here, <clears throat> is in here. She's uh, across on the other side of the camera. Say, so Shauna, um, working all day on your S6L, and yeah, uh, she loves that thing. You yeah. know, everybody. Super having a lot of fun um, getting in your your pro. Yeah, roles. I think, and, and I, I'm not trying to sell it. Uh, it's I'm I'm a user, so I kind of know my way around on it. Uh, but I think it's more it's a good time to be expanding your your uh, your skill set and also getting your mind open to different. I mean, they all sort of have different flows on on the desk, so. 
Um, you may know a Digicode desk pretty well, and it's probably a good time to get on an S6L and see how that works for you. And uh, um, Amer, I wouldn't have a Yamaha around here, but I would say the same thing if it was here. I'd say get on that and and uh, well, like a Rivage. Yeah, and yeah. and, and uh, you know get get to know how it works. They they have different philosophies slightly. Yeah, uh, they have a lot of similarities. Yeah, but, uh, but you definitely need to know how to talk to it. Yeah, but also just uh, oh, because I think it's revealing to get on a desk that you're not that familiar with, and and things may pop, things may click. I mean, oh, that's interesting. It's cool they do that. You know, kind of an intuitive you know, way. Yeah, right. No, I can see how you you could make this work for you in a you know in your your uh, way of doing things. You know, so I, I think it's great. It's sitting over there. It's great. People want to tootle around on it. It's not doing anything else. Yeah. Well, you got a couple in the back room. We too. got three of them. Yeah. Uh, are you guys considering uh, getting into the live streaming game? <clears throat> I know you got the technology. Y you know, we've batted it around, and uh, we seems to be the place to be right now. <laughs> yeah, but I would, we we can't really figure out how to make it um, pro like financially viable over, over the long term. Sure. Like you, you know, a, a thing here or a thing there is interesting, and bands may do it. But it's almost more promotional in a way, or just a good vibe thing sure. for their fans. Giving you know? something back. Yeah, um, and that's great. Mm -hmm. But uh, to do it over the long term, it, um, it's really quite, kind of a matter of finding out how do you make this work for everybody financially. Because I mean, you can't ask people to throw their, you know, throw themselves at it for free more than a couple times, you know? <laughs> Before, that becomes a problem, sure. Um, yeah, I, I think that's the exact same place that I've landed with it. I'm struggling to... I don't know, like, people are out there doing it, shows at drive-ins and shows at, uh, yeah. here and doing things, and, and I, that's great, it's awesome, it's really, I'm sure people are clamoring for some entertainment. Absolutely. But I, it's hard to see how, on a large scale, that is... Uh, the drive-in thing? Yeah, that, that or, or something like that is gonna be something that's... Um, generates enough cash basically to be you know i mean you have to pay people to come in you have that's to, right you know, still have to put up lights you still have to you know people have to run cameras so um really what needs to happen is to figure out a way to get people employed and you know and uh you know if, it, if somebody figures out a way to make a you know a good amount of money on that then i'm all for it i'd be first in line yeah uh, me and you both uh we'd love to figure that out so kind of speaking to that or carrying that that thought out a little bit. Um, there's some speculation about when we're going to be back out there, you know, mm. putting on shows, doing what we do. Uh, we do what we do because we actually we're lucky. One of the few groups in the, and you know, you don't always get to like what you do. And we, I love what I do, and I know you do. And we want to be out there. Do you have <clears throat> any kind of sense what the future holds as you see it? When you're 35 years of experience, mm. and, well, I mean, this and give us dates and times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, March 23rd. Yes. No, um, <laughs> I, I mean, this is unprecedented, right? I mean, this is That's all just unprecedented in history, and um, crazy time. It's shut down now. I mean, there's mm -hmm. next to nothing happening. Um, I. I uh, the optimist in me says that we might see some small things start happening in the fall. Maybe a few things go out, uh, not large scale. But but again, you I mean you have to get, you have to fill a place to make it financially viable. That's right. And you have to fill. You can't just go tour Florida. You have to go around. You know. I mean, it's so to do this and for people to feel safe doing it. Uh, Man, um, I would say next spring, maybe. Wow. Uh, now, that all changes if somebody has a vaccine for this thing, and it's real. Uh, but well, they still didn't have to pump out 100 million doses. And, I mean, that's way out of my... You have, you have been know. keeping up on that? Well, I mean, I, I, read, I read what you read, which oh, is no, everything. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, just wanna, you read one opinion, turn a page, you read another. No one knows. No uh, one knows. I... I think the worst case scenario is in the next year. 
Wow, now stop it. I didn't ask you to come out here and be all gloom and doom. I mean, I got <laughs> I people we're trying to cheer up. He's kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Let's, let's we'll see. With, I mean, there's, a, with, there's yeah. a number of ways this goes, right? Yeah. And a lot of it depends on, um, you know, the scientists coming up with some treatment. And, uh, and a lot of it, because to me that means people can feel safe going and being in a crowd of people, which is the only thing that makes this scale. You know? Yeah, you're completely right. I know that's the end all, that's basically the bottom line. Yeah, and, and, and also, my, there could be like a cultural change with the mask thing, maybe. I mean, you know, people are, are, some people push back against it, and, and I understand, but I also, I also, like other cultures, it's totally, it's what they, it's they've been doing. It's a very normal ages, thing, right? that's right. And, uh, I, I, you might see that come around. That may make a difference too. Like if you, if, if everybody's really comfortable wearing masks and being in a room with other people, but man, I don't see that happening for the next. Probably few start months. outdoor with masks. You know. You know, possibly, but I think there's going to be. Um, it would not surprise me if there were uh, uh, capacity limits on places, and and you you know, I mean, everybody's going to have to come to the table because. You can't put 5,000 people in an arena on an arena tour and, and well, I mean, I get, you, you can, but it, you know what I mean. I mean, you want, you want all the monies in that after you've sold 75, 80% out. Absolutely, you know? yeah. So, uh, and again, I mean, I, I'm just a sound guy, so there's a lot about that I don't know. I won't pretend to know, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not optimistic about anything happening this, this year. year. Yeah. However... I would say I could sort of imagine being in Australia in the winter, uh, their summer. We well, don't have to imagine you've done it many times. Right, but I mean, like, that, that, that might be a thing, that, that Australia comes around, for example, comes around where they're, they've got a handle on things and it's summer, which is a little, apparently a little, I understand a little bit better. In winter, oh, for for, for viruses, exposure right? and so on. Um, but again, I'm talking out of school here. I, I, there's a lot about this I don't know, but I, I kind of have like the optimist in me says, well, you know, we maybe in December and January we're down in South America and you know, Australia. That'd be so. awesome. Yeah, but ish, I'm not. Uh, well, I'm not banking on it. <laughs> I think part of this, the whole surviving this thing, is being an optimist, and uh, you know, I know you'll be ready. We're certainly ready here at Sound. I'm ready now. Our gear is call me. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't couldn't be more prepared. The longest winter maintenance I've ever been, and uh, super fun. Listen, I could talk to you forever. Um, <laughs> yeah, likewise. You know, you got stories. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on. Seriously, uh, it's a, you're a good My guest pleasure. and you're a good friend. Um, keep care of your family and uh, see you, you around much. the shed. Thank you very much. I'll be right over there. <laughs> he, he's close by. Yeah, right <laughs> Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah. Be good. Much appreciated, man. Yeah, of course. Yep. Happy birthday. Thank you, brother. Yeah, yeah. we got um, we got a shout-out out for Kyle Thomas. Kyle Thomas, happy 30th birthday, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. another day, another fun. dog biscuit. Yeah, if you uh, behave. We've talked about this. It's, uh, you know, it's conditioned on behavior, the uh, dog biscuit thing. That's it. I'm a good boy. You are a good boy. My dog <laughs> you are a good boy. <laughs> we want to thank uh, Robert Cortez and uh, Soul Food Stew. And it looks like a, a bunch of people had signed in. Hi, guys. Thanks for coming around. Um, listen, we couldn't do this thing without the help of uh, a few folks, uh, starting with uh, the people right here at Sound Image. Um, my general manager, George Edwards, the big cheese here in the, the, the building. And, of course, uh, Mr. Dave Shadone, the CEO of Sound Image. Uh, thanks, you, Dave. We really appreciate you guys. Thanks, man. Um, we also got uh, uh, the help with the uh, gear from the LSV, our good friends down at LSV Large Screen Video. That's John Rigney and his people. Thank you, Johnny. You're the man. We truly, truly appreciate you. And, um, of course, uh, we do... Yes, and you do what you want to do when it comes to the social distancing and the mask and all that. We totally, America, man. Uh, but uh, here we get a little help with that from uh, the people at slowfiber.com. Uh, they take care of a bunch of stuff for us. We get holes in sandbags or a drape has problems, whatever it is. Uh, they make it so we can have masks down at our, uh, at our different shops so people can still work kind of safely together. That's our thing. Do your thing. And last but not least, uh, my good friends at Diablo Digital, uh, you know, Brad and Greg, we're lucky enough to share space with them. And uh, when you need some 
Pro Tools rigs that get the job done every time just right. My goodness, very lucky. Bobby Wilcox. Uh, who's that? Uh, Robert Wilcox is saying <laughs> hi. Hey, Rob. Yeah, you guys will be working together very soon. Robert's um, <clears throat> Molly Cruz, uh, Vince's uh, monitor engineer. Thanks for tuning in, Robert and uh, Michael and Winston Dame, my brother. Man, it looks like Pete O'Doul, too. Pete O'Doul, thank you guys. Thanks to everybody for tuning Thanks, in. Man. We really appreciate it. We have fun doing this. We do it for you. It's the only reason we do it. It's uh, keep our chops up a little bit, mostly, but it's fun talking with our friends, and we get that in, in these moments. So thank you for tuning in. Um, we're going to be here next weekend with John Del Rio. Mm, can't wait. Yeah, big daddy. Mm. Okay, this is a big hulk of a man, throws steel around for a living, uh, accurate staging, uh, Gallagher staging. Uh, we like to get all the different disciplines in here. He's uh, He's been in the business forever, and he's a great guy. Uh, if you want to see us again, come back next week, Thursday at 7 p.m. Same bat time, same bat channel. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good night.